Now, our next guest is one of Ireland's best singers slash musicians who spent lockdown live streaming from his living room. And from those live streams, singer Jack L has created a new series entitled Postcards from the Edge, where he talks to well-known faces as well as regular people about how they coped with the last 18 months. And he plays a few tunes, of course. <laughs> Let's take a look at the first episode that aired Wednesday night. And she stepped away from Jack L, it's great to have you here with us. Morning, Looking Jack. at that now, what is it like looking back at the last 18 months? Because you were essentially gigging from your own bedroom. Well, uh, to begin with, yeah, I was doing it from home and just on the phone. And then it evolved. Lots of people were watching, thousands and thousands of people all over the world. So I, got a I have a home studio, so I set it up the proper sound, got a better phone, so I look better. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff. The lights uh, were there. The lights. I had a projectors growing. So I, my whole thing was to try to, uh, you know, to, to get the vibe of a, of a real gig across the internet. Um, and you know, it became a lovely thing. We had. A, I, do, I used to do. A gig. It was every Saturday night. The postcards from the edges every Wednesday at eight o'clock on Facebook Live. But I used to do it every Saturday. So everybody met up. It became a community kind yeah. of thing. And uh, you know, where everybody would meet up, and I'd go on early and leave it running, and people would chat beforehand. So it was lovely. It was that everybody wants that felt presence of something happening. It was a connection, real though. It was yeah. a connection yeah. to your audience in that, in that kind of dark period. How, how quickly into lockdown did you think? <clears throat> right, I have to pivot here. Well, I, have to do something. I, I was in the middle of recording an album, and then I was getting ready to go back on the road. So yeah, it was yeah. all primed to go. Yeah. So and I'd never really done the live stream thing, but uh, and the first few were weird because you have that silence, the dead noise in yeah, between yeah. the songs. Mm -hmm. So I started putting in fake applause and just things to make it more fun and keep it rolling because a gig is kind of about keeping the energy yeah. rolling. You and know? the crowd keep that and energy yeah, going. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, and you're kind of carrying the witches. So I kind of found ways of doing that. And this Postcards from the Edge is kind of an extension of it. It's, uh, as I said, it's now on Wednesday nights, but it's a larger, bigger production with another avenue. And we have uh, guests on. I keep Barry on the other night. Uh, Going around interviewing different charities, uh, the Muslim Sisters of Air were on, uh, Age in Action. Uh, we're involved with uh, The Wheel, which is a, 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 an umbrella uh, charity group that covers lots of different people. So it's trying to harness that thing that we had at the beginning where everybody was kind of communities yeah. came back together yeah. and we, we all remembered that because we're kind of kind of moving out of that now we're all going back to the treadmill. Yeah. So it's to try to um, hang on to that a little bit and remind people. Yeah. What was it like, though? I mean, as a performer, the lack of having a live audience in front of you must have been pretty weird to, mm. to, to kind of experience. But there was still that kind of as live experience for, for anyone who, who tuned into your, your Facebook lives because people wanted something to hold on to. Mm. They wanted something tangible, something real, even, even if they couldn't be there in person. Yeah. Did, how did you find it? Yeah, I, you know, I'm adjustable. I mean, the, the music, you have to be adjustable in the music business anyway, because yeah. it's mayhem, really. So. I kind of, like I said, the first few were odd because I, I, I did them and I was kind of going, God, that was weird. Because you turn it off and you're there alone. Yeah. Like, yeah. In the first few alone. So there was no after party. There was no after party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then I went and I looked at the messages and that people from all over the world, yeah, everybody yeah. I'd ever met was basically yeah. online. And like I said, at that beginning time of the lockdown, everybody was scared. So it was really yeah. something that brought everybody back together. What were the kind of messages you were getting from people, though? Why it, these were yeah. going on? Because like, you were getting the messages as it was happening. Well, you know, quite literally, people were being born and people were dying. You know, yeah, yeah. you would get messages of people being sick and then you would get a message that somebody passed away and stuff. Right. So, and then you would get a message that somebody was born during, during the whole thing. So it was on that level. And... Uh, so it, it I'd was, imagine it was a very well, fluid experience though in terms of, did, did you set out with a set list every night, every, every well, gig? I was do, so I was doing my own songs, the own original, original stuff, and then I thought, well, if I keep, you know, so I tried to mix it up so I start doing different artists. Yeah. I did Leonard Cohen, Bob Dylan, I got into Elvis, uh, <laughs> Bowie, uh, we did an 80s night, we did a uh, movies night. 
Uh, we did a moon tunes night, which was on the full moon. I would do <laughs> songs with the moon in it. Which <laughs> it you, turns you, into a lunatic, you, literally. You, you could do a week of moon you could, songs. Yeah, 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 you yeah, mentioned yeah. so many times. So, and then I did a lockdown album, which was, was kind of great. I went online and got people to... Uh, Prepay for it while it was well. I did the gig, and yeah. so I got an album out of it too. That's what yeah. I love about the whole album idea because um, whatever was your beautiful voice yourself, you got that voice from somewhere. It was your dad, mm. and he was with you for this too. Yes, I got him on the lockdown album, singing a couple of tunes at me. I had him recorded from a, a few a few years back. So did I was he take much to, convincing, to, uh, Jack, or was he? Was oh he no, I'm delighted. I mean, that's, <laughs> so. that's where I got my voice. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so it was great to get him. Um, on the album as well, and sing a song is. with him as well, yeah. So as you mentioned earlier on, we're kind of creeping back towards some sort of new normality. Mm. You're back on the road, and you've got some really big gigs coming up, and one that you want to mention for next year. Yeah, well, I'm announcing the, the mm. Tree Arena on the 25th of November 2022. So uh, tickets go on sale next Wednesday at 9 <sighs> o'clock. And uh, it doesn't yeah. get much bigger than that, Jack. Well, I mean, it's a bit of a celebration of yeah. us all. You know, we, we're, we're slowly building back to full yeah. steam again. So yeah. that's going to be the all the people who've that's been watching me online and yeah. all the kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, then you'll have the after party that's for that party, one. That's yeah. Yeah. Can we go, you better invite yeah. us to that <laughs> one because that would be some session, I'd say. You are invited officially. We're going to hold you to that, we're going to hold you to that. But now, um, you've worked some, some, with some amazing people over the years and someone I'm particularly jealous of is Jules Holland. I love his TV show, oh, yeah. I love his music, I love everything about him. What is it like working with him all oh. the time? Because you've done it a few times now. Yeah, it's amazing. I've been looking to tour with him a lot over the last few years. We just, uh, in August, we were playing at Sandringham, the Queen's other house. It's beautiful there, everything. isn't it? Yeah, gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah. I've been there a few Can't times. We've been there very close to it. But, um, uh, so, yes, yeah, so I'm doing the Royal Albert Hall with him in uh, November as well. So, yeah, it's great. I mean, his band is like a 20-piece band that's been with him for years. Some of the best musicians you'll ever Would see. Would it be fair to describe him as the musician's musician? Yeah. Almost he's, definitely. Yeah, but all yeah. he wants to do, like all musicians, is talk about music and yeah. his favourite songs and his favourite But he's artists. also happy to showcase new, upcoming, mm, yeah. different. He's such an eclectic taste in music. Everything, And he yeah. showcases it all, yeah. doesn't he? And it's great because his show, he'll have different singers, you know, on the tour. And you get to meet Eddie Reader yeah. was doing the last one and Mark Almond and just so many different people you get to see perform. Uh, Ruby Turner, who sings with him, just comes out at the end and just blows everyone yeah. out of the water. So yeah, you're, you're looking at some of the finest musicians in the business. You're with royalty there. And to hang out with them. So at Sandringham. Cool. <laughs> at Sandringham, so it, yeah, it doesn't get much better. Yeah. Very, 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 very oh, far very, from I've become her. very fancy. <laughs> very in, terms of the, in terms of the new album, did, did lockdown influence the album in terms of, did it influence your writing at all? Well, it was mostly, because I was doing so many different artists, there was one or two original songs on it, but yeah. uh, it was, ma it was mainly written? from the best of the, the various nights. But yeah, I've been writing all the way during lockdown, and yeah, I've got lots of songs ready to go. I'm going to release an album uh, next year, and um, you can't help but be influenced by yeah. this. You know, you, you know the... Uh, a lot of my songs are, are joyous kind of celebrations, uh, lamentations, whatever, but so it falls right into that yeah. category yeah. of what we've all been through. Can I ask you now, and I'm terrible for asking this to all musicians <laughs> I talk to, what is the, the kind of seminal moment? In all the gigs you've done, what has been the most wow experience you've had? Well, I've had a good few of them. Um, I did slightly like the Brooklyn Philharmonic Orchestra once. Wow. The whole, uh, yeah, imagine on, that on, wall of sound. On a, ha on a harbour, on an open air thing, looking back at Manhattan, we were out on, on, the, on the pier and there's thousands of people and watching the cars go by on the, the freeway and then singing with them. So that's surreal. But then, I yeah. mean, it's like football, you're only good, as good as your last game. You enjoy the small yeah. little gigs in little places around Ireland or wherever. As, you're always on to the next thing, and you can have such a special night in a small room with people as much as the, the big bonanza, yeah. you know. Well, people can enjoy the small room gigs with your uh, postcards on the edge, yes. and then get your tickets for the three arena this next week. Wednesday, and we're going to be at the after party. Yeah. yeah, we will. Yes. That'll be a quiet with night. Bells on, literally. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> I will see you there. Good yeah. to see you. You Cheers. can watch Thanks Jack's new Facebook Live series, Postcards on the Edge, on Jack's Facebook page every Wednesday from 8 Bells. Now, up next, Ireland Hockey International Russian Upton joins us. Stay with us.